Hey everyone, Ben Hansen here. I'm a UFO researcher and TV host, um, most recently on Discovery Plus and Travel Channel UFO Witness. Um, I'm going to make this pretty brief. This is a developing story that's happening right now. I've been on the phone for several hours this weekend trying to put this story together. Uh, it's quite incredible. I think you'll agree with um, everything that uh, is associated with the story. Um, basically, we have a uh, pilot UFO slash UAP sighting that happened on August 18th of this year, so just a couple of weeks ago, um, over the Pacific Coast, California, uh, Los Angeles area. And what I'm going to do for you is kind of lay out, um, you know, what took place, and then I actually have some air traffic control. Um, I wouldn't call them leaked because it's not anything that is is not publicly accessible or viewable but it's an advanced copy of the air traffic control radar tapes and the radio chatter uh, we're working on getting a FOIA request right now of getting the actual uh, downloaded hard copy of that but then this pilot was lucky enough to get footage um, of the objects that he was seeing as well so this is really exciting breaking news and uh, I want to lay out for you exactly what happened first of all so uh, this pilot is an F-18, retired F-18 pilot for the Marine Corps. He has 20 plus years experience flying F-18s and also Black Hawk helicopters. He has every imaginable certification license you can think of um, from instructing to um, flying both in military and private, uh, in the private sector, helicopters and jets. So he was flying for a private client on August 18th from Miami uh, Executive Airport, and they were going to Maui, um, Hawaii. So this was, I, I'm guessing, probably about midnight on the 18th. There's a three-hour time change. Um, as they're flying into Los Angeles airspace, he is at 47,000 feet, okay, flying a uh, Gulfstream 650. So the Gulf Stream is going around at a, a pretty decent clip. Um, they measure the speed in Mach uh, numbers as soon as you get up to jets that go this fast, and I believe it was 0.87 Mach. So of course not, you know, uh, greater, faster than than Mach speed, but I think that translates to about 560 knots. So at any rate, 47,000 feet, he notices a uh, a, a group of two to three lights. They're red in color. He describes them as red. As you can see here in the video we'll play in a minute, they, they almost take on a pinkish purplish tint. That might be just because of the phone and, and how it was filmed. He describes them as red and these lights are pacing his aircraft. Okay, so he just came off the coast. He's heading due west over the ocean and these lights followed his aircraft for about 15 minutes is what he estimates. I spoke to him for well over a couple hours now at this point over the weekend and he maintains that because they were pacing him and they're at an altitude above where he is, um, he his best estimate, it's really hard to judge distance and um, altitude especially at night, but they were at least a couple thousand feet above his altitude. So that could be five, ten thousand feet, but he's at forty-seven thousand. Now the Gulf Stream 650 has a service ceiling of about fifty-one thousand feet. So being a military pilot, he knows. He told me that um, it's very unlikely that the jets that do fly higher than that would be like your U-2s, SR-71, which uh, he says does still fly every now and then. But it would take a tremendous turning radius, um, kind of like a whole state in width to be able to turn around because of the speeds that they have to fly at those altitudes. But these things were doing circles. Okay, They're kind of orbiting around each other. I later asked him, is it possible it was one solid structure and that they weren't really orbiting but these um, very quickly flashing lights were maybe part of a structure that just was in a circular pattern? And he said, well, maybe, except that while he's watching these, a fifth light shows up the object descends, and he was hesitant to say this, but he said it looked like a shooting star. It comes down, joins the other four lights, and they're doing these circle patterns. 
they move from the right of his aircraft and above him to um, almost directly in front of him and then pass over the top of his plane so where he can't see looking up the cockpit, can't see them anymore, and then they move back to the right. So they didn't ever go completely right to left in front of him, but at some point they're almost directly in front of him. So this really concerns him. He calls up air traffic control, which he's talking to LA Center, and uh, this happened at 12.20, just about 12.20 a.m. on August 18th, and makes the report. So what you're going to hear first is the report, the, the full um, exchange. It may not be the full exchange, actually, because this is just developing. I think there was other radio chatter. And um, they have on their screen the radar tape, which is kind of blurry. Now, the way this came about is interesting, too. Like I said, it's, um, it's not anything that can't be released to the public, but the air traffic controllers were so excited about what they were seeing, when he landed on their own, they took initiative to find him, find him through his company and call him and said, um, it wasn't just you that saw these. In fact, there was, um, to his recollection, it was a United and a Delta flight as well that had seen these lights they just didn't want to report it over the radio so we have multiple witnesses um, this is not something occurring in the cockpit like a reflection off the the, the windscreen um, you know of lights inside the cockpit definitely not others had seen these and he called it in so you're going to hear the radio chatter i'm going to boost the sound a little bit so you can hear what's going on and um you can hear them calling the female controller calls her higher up supervisor to ask what to do. And uh, I really think if, if they're watching this air traffic controllers, thank you for taking the um, proactive step of contacting the pilot and getting this information out because although we are doing a FOIA, it can take a long time to do. And we really, really appreciate that uh, the FAA is taking an active interest in this and uh, I'll fill you in as we go. So. Here is the uh, the exchange with the radio. Yeah, no, I appreciate it. Yep. 
pretty crazy i really love the the back and forth radio chatter and um, you could tell he was hesitant at first saying i've got you know two or three craft above me and uh was asking if they had anything on radar she says no i don't then when she called her supervisor um she says i don't have any hot airspace meaning there's there's no military activity planned or we've been warned of um in this area and often, you know, in, in the West, um, just off the coast, I know because I fly there a lot, they'll have warning uh, notifications, notums that are put out as to either exercises, training routes, things like that, and there's nothing going on. Now, remember, this is 47,000 feet. And um, when she comes back to him and says, the only thing we can come up with is it might be satellites, but they don't move in circles. He's like, no, no, ma'am. In fact, um, that's where he tells them that he's a a Marine F-18 pilot, and he's made several intercepts, and he's never seen anything like this. So um, his credibility and and what he was telling me about actual intercepts he has made, uh, we'll get into a little bit later um, in a different video, but this is the first time he's visually seen anything. So we can rule out satellites. Um, these These definitely are not, as I show you the video here. You'll be able to see the blinking pattern. I did uh, check to see when Starlink, um, Elon Musk's, you know, uh, constellation of um, communication satellites that are being put up almost weekly. The um, the last one that took place before this, I think, was August 11th, and then August 19th, which was the night after. I get so many reports about Starlink. They look very, very different. They travel in a single line. They can flash and shimmer, but they do not do this. And they do not fly um, and change position from looking, you know, five to 10,000 feet above your altitude to going in front of your plane and then back again. And um, definitely uh, not a satellite activity that we're looking at here. And uh, it's not in the cockpit. Like I said, it's not something that he's seeing in the windscreen because we have other witnesses. So let's take a look at the video of what actually he filmed from the primary flight display. Now, as I pull this up, you can first see that uh, this flight display is divided into the attitude indicator on the top, shows the elevation to the side is 47,020 feet. And then if you go down to the compass rows on the bottom, for those of you who care about this stuff, I do because I'm a, a geek uh, being a pilot, but that number above the compass is 251. That's the actual heading is 251 degrees. The one to the left, it says the track is 255. That's the track um, that they're actually flying. Um, but what happens, or I'm sorry, the 251 is the heading. Yeah, the track is, that little arrow there says 42. That's a 42 knot um, crosswind that's coming basically from the southwest of him. So it's pushing him. He actually has to turn the plane into the wind to keep that track. All right. And then if you go over to the right hand side, the pink numbers, 258, that's the heading bug 
um, heading towards Dinty, D-I-N-T-Y. So if uh, you want to look this up, go to skyvector.com or one of those that does uh, air charts. You'll see that Dinty is a waypoint um, used in GPS navigation. And at the top of the logs there, where his next waypoints are, it says 0745 Zulu. That's when they're expected in universal time to pass over that waypoint which uh, is 1245 a.m. local time. And uh, we also see from that little box, it's 103 nautical miles away. So uh, who cares about all this stuff? Well, we can now exactly pinpoint where he is. Okay, and I'm going to pull that up here in just a minute to show you where he is and which direction he's looking at uh, here within LA Center's airspace. So he's filming the flight display. I'm really glad that he did this because then he's going to pan away and you're going to get the first glimpse of the lights. Now, it's not spectacular, okay? But you got to remember, we've been spoiled by the Nimitz uh, videos, Tic Tac and, and the Go Fast and all those. Um, he's filming with an iPhone, okay? And love Apple products, but it's very low light. Um, it doesn't do well in low light is what I'm trying to say. So uh, these lights are very bright. And the flash pattern is not like anything conventional, as you'll see here. So he apologizes for filming vertically. Um, a lot of people do this, and you get excited and do it even when you don't know not to. But... Um, I'm going to zoom in because it's just a quick little glimpse initially and I'm going to zoom in on just that part of it so that it can fill the screen and we're going to slow it down as well. Okay, so that was the first glimpse. Now I know some of you who are really hard to please, I'm not here to entertain you. Um, <laughs> this is actually, uh, we're really lucky he filmed anything, okay? If you stay with me, you're gonna see the best stuff. But we're really lucky we got any video out of it whatsoever. Um, like I said, phones don't film so well at night and he, he didn't even know that he captured it in this first video because he's got a lot going on in the cockpit. He's trying to talk to air traffic control. Um, he's trying to figure out you know, how to get the best angle to film this. And so I'm putting up right now a program that I use that places his GPS coordinates. Um, we, we got uh, the distance from where he was from that waypoint. You can see that it puts him just southwest of the Santa Barbara Channel Islands, probably about 15 miles. And um, so we know exactly where he was when um, he filmed the primary flight display in that video. Now, if you back up a bit, he said it was about 7 uh, Zulu time 720 so 1220 a.m. when he first started seeing these things now remember they they trailed him they paced him for at least 15 minutes 15 minutes it's matching his speed of his craft and they're dancing in front of him going above him going back you saw that zip by pretty quickly okay so he's witnessing this whole thing trying to search and see where they're at now and he starts filming again so Somewhere between what I just showed you, which I think is probably the tail end of this, and backing up where air traffic control said he's 25 miles west of LAX, roughly, he, uh, he takes another video. And in this video, you're going to see the city lights below. He's looking due north, out the right side of the aircraft. Okay, so um, I believe this is probably San Pedro area, maybe looking into downtown LA. He's probably not quite as far as the Channel Islands yet. And, um, you know, based on, on kind of timing and everything here. So you're going to see the city below. And in the top left-hand side, you're going to see the actual uh, lights, which he films longer. And they're far more clear. You can see the pattern here is, is not easily explainable. Oh, 
Six eight seven eight established two million. Seven eight established two million. Wow. So the, the pattern it seems to be um, either going around a solid structure. Um, there's a point where it looks almost triangular to, um, you know, random separate uh, craft that are kind of joining together. So the best argument, like I said, for separate um, objects is that that fifth light, which is not shown on the video, but he said joined and it came down like a shooting star and then joined the other ones. So um, what is it? I mean, we could talk about drones, all right? Let's 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 be open to that possibility. Well, 0.87 Mach, for those who want to know the conversion, is 574 miles an hour. For those of us who use metric system, 923 kilometers an hour, or 498 knots. So a uh, conventional drone, uh, that high up, above 50,000 feet, moving at that speed, not only moving forward with him, but then changing direction rapidly to come across the top of him and over the top in that turning radius. We're not talking about off-the-shelf drones. I don't really know that, uh, let's just say this, if it's not US, we're in deep trouble, okay? If that's somebody else's drones uh, making maneuvers like that because it's gotta be using some um, alternative propulsion and inertia uh, displacing system. So. We've got very, very fast objects or object, and um, here he's filmed it. As you see, it slowed down. One interesting side note that he pointed out to me as he was on the phone with me is at the tail end of that, if you look up in that upper quadrant, there is some sort of purplish pink uh, beam looks like that's coming down. Now, my initial thought is that this is some type of a lens flare maybe um, a reflection kind of that is caused by his windshield from a, a, a really bright light source, which would be probably in front of the aircraft. So I'm thinking, is the moon out? All right, is, is the moon bright and is it in a direction where as he's just moving around, it causes that sort of a flare to appear? And um, I did reach out to Mark D'Antonio, who is MUFON's chief photo analyst, and had him use his software to find out where was the moon that night, exactly at that time, and uh, in Los Angeles. And pulling up on the screen here, you can see that it's in the northeast at 75 degrees azimuth, 15 degrees off the horizon, and less than half percent full. So I don't have a diagram here for you, but if you're flying your plane, and on the tail end would be east, way back here, barely over the horizon, is your light source very, very unlikely that's the moon. Now, it doesn't mean that it, um, it, it could be a very bright uh, star, I suppose, or something that's causing that. But uh, what we do know is that the lights themselves definitely are not reflections. We have those two airlines I told you about that had witnessed them. We do know that they're not showing up on radar. So uh, whatever these objects are, uh, being solid craft is an assumption, but they're not showing up on radar. So there's some type of signature management or something going on to why uh, both his TCAS, which is his onboard radar 
is not picking them up and neither is um, air traffic control, yet people, other pilots, are seeing them visually in the sky. So um, as we round this up, this is a developing story. So please forgive me for kind of jumping around here. But as I've been filming and editing this, I'm getting phone calls and getting more information. I'm going to show you the final video, um, which is very brief, where he said this is where it flew over the top of him. It's um, not as great as this last one I just showed you, but it's the final three uh, videos that he shot. And I'm waiting for the high-res version of this. I don't think we're going to get much out of it. Uh, this was a bit compressed. I don't think we'll get much more out of it, but I want to show you that, and then I want to get into the ADSB track of exactly uh, where he was because I think that's important too. So the pilot tells me at this point, uh, he believes this video was the last time that it flew over the top of his craft. And just as the video is ending there, they kind of disappear and uh, are pretty much directly in front of him and go over the top of his craft. And he's not able to see them again. So the duration again was about 15 minutes. And um, that last radio call that he makes, he's leaving the LA Center airspace and uh, they're telling him, I'm sorry, we can't help you. We, we're only guessing here. We have no idea what it is. Now, um, pulling up the what we call ADSB, which is like a transponder. It's something that's mandatory now for most airspaces for all aircraft to have. Gives you the identification of each aircraft. You'll see here um, he's going by Twilight 670 as his call sign, but on the ADSB, it's not showing up as uh, the tail number. It's unidentified. That's just because his client um, has opted out of having that uh, information tracked. But the aircraft shows up. So you can see it here coming along uh, from the east, flying um, over the coastline. It's pretty much due west. And then you're also going to see Delta 41. And that's the, the flight I told you that leaves from LAX pretty much every night to go to Sydney. Now that night it took off late. I think it was um, maybe shortly before uh, midnight. And when they made the final call, as you can see here, they're, they're quite a ways ahead of him. When they made their final call to change frequencies and leave the airspace, I think that uh, that aircraft might very well be one of those that um, had also witnessed this. Okay, so one of the great things about ADSB also is that you can see here there were no um, planned, no flight plans, no tracked ADSB, nothing in the area just north of where the Gulf Stream is flying. So, general aviation, military, commercial, all of that's going to show up in this airspace, and there's nothing here uh, towards the direction he was taking that video. Um, also, I guess we could kind of put a, a general call out here, and I could use everybody's help. If you know anybody who was on one of these flights, I've identified a couple of, of um, commercial flights that the passengers or pilots may have seen something because they were either leaving just before or uh, right after the Gulf Stream. We have uh, Fiji Airways um, 811. We've got um, Air France Flight 78. And then fast forwarding, we have Qantas Flight 12 and United 2650. So um, again, this was about 1220 to 1240 AM on August 18th. It'd be really great if uh, we could gather that information. My social media, the, the best way to get a hold of me, um, my website is Ben Hansen, H-A-N, 
SEN.com. There's some contact info there. But I'm also on Twitter and Instagram, and I'll be posting updates on um, primarily Twitter and Facebook is, is where I usually do things. I'm trying to get up to speed on Instagram. I'm not on TikTok. But um, this is, is developing. I'm still getting calls as I'm sitting here. So the last thing I want to talk about is just what happened the next day, which is the story gets stranger, is that as uh, the pilot lands in Maui, like I said, the ATC um, tracked him down and somebody there um, gave him this copy of um, the, the taped footage. And we're now trying to track down because there is information, if true, that the actual tapes might be corrupted or deleted. And, and I'm not, I don't want to jump to any um, conclusions here. We don't even know if this is verified yet. I would hate to think that it was deliberately done if, if it happened um, a lot of times. I mean, my even my copy of it here was somewhat corrupt. So don't, sh uh, don't know what's going on there. But they also gave him a phone number to call. And um, the pilot was not sure who he was talking to. When he called this number to make the report, he said it was a government agency in D.C. Um, I've since been able to trace down the number to the Joint Air Traffic Operations Command or um, JTOC Air Traffic Security Coordinator. So this is great. I'm really glad the FAA is taking this seriously because they kicked it up the food chain. They said they already had the radar tapes and the report from ATC. Um, not going to get into how the policy goes when, when they have something anomalous like this, but... Um, apparently, I believe there was talk of them compiling this to include it in the congressional uh, data reports that's going to, to Congress for the next round of um, UAP hearings. So that's great news. Just trying to do our part in this and tracking down what exactly happened and get the word out. Very, very strange um, that so many you know different aspects of this that remain yet to be um, answered and, and things that we need to tie up on. So thanks for listening and please reach out to me if you have any more additional information and news media and those who want to cover this can find me um, primarily through my website at benhanson.com. Thanks so much everybody. Stay tuned. Uh, things are about to get uh, exciting I think in the next year.